Today's teaching is going to be qualification for preaching. The reason I made this tape is because people were asking me, how you know, was I ordained to do this, to become a preacher? You know, what gave me the right to make these tapes? So I want to show you biblically what the Bible says, what qualifies you to be a preacher or a teacher. I want to show you in Acts 30:31. It's talking about Philip and this Ethiopian who was reading the Bible. And it says, Philip ran over and heard what he was reading and asked, Do you understand it? Of course not, the man replied. How can I when there is no one to instruct me? And he begged Philip to come up into the chariot and sit with him. So as soon as Philip, a man of God, saw that there was a person that was interested in learning what God has to say becoming a Christian he ran over there and that's the way we should be when we know somebody's hungry and is in search, is searching we should run to them with the truth of God and this Ethiopian was a, was an intelligent guy because he is a treasurer and but he couldn't understand what he was reading because he says of course not I don't understand unless someone teach me so Philip got up in the chariot and started to help him to understand the scriptures. You know, people should have that hunger. And people do have that hunger. People hunger for any kind of truth. I mean, you got people following almost anything out there. There's a lot of religions and a lot of religions have a lot of people. Because people, are, that's what they're, they, they want. They want a God. Okay, they want something to look up to. Something they can put their faith in. And we have that. So when we see someone searching like that, we should run to them. As soon as we find out, we should run to them. So we can give them the truth before some false religion comes over and tells them things that are different from what the Bible say. You know, when you're a baby, you're taught by your parents right and wrong. And then later on, you start getting your friends and you start kind of going, living by the way your friends live. And then when you become an adult, then you kind of start making your own decisions on how you want to live. Well, when you become a born again Christian, that's what it means, born again. You put away all that that you've learned because it was all worldly, unless you was brought up by Christian family. But you put that all aside and, you, and it says born again and you learn a new way of learning how to live and that's what we should teach and preach to people that you need to be born again and if and like me I, you know I have teachings on on that's for lost people so they can come to know the Lord but then I have a lot of teachings that are for Christians just so they can grow in in their walk with the Lord and that's what I do in Romans 10:14 but how shall they ask him to save them unless they believe in him and how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him and how can they hear about him unless someone tells them so right here the scriptures is is telling us you know how's how's these people how are they going to learn how are they going to know unless there's someone out there to tell them so we need preachers and teachers. This is biblical. We need preachers and teachers to tell the lost or to help babies get on their feet and become mature Christians. Now we'll start with 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 7. I want to give you the qualifications. What the Bible says qualifies you to be a preacher. Verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desires the office of a bishop he desires a good work a bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife vigilant, sober of good behavior given to hospitality apt to teach not given to wine nor striker not greedy of filthy lucre but patient not a brawler not, not covetous one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. 
not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall in reproach and the snare of the devil. Now these are the these are qualifications that you need to meet to become a preacher or a teacher. Now there's there's men in the Bible who are called to be ministers. That have a calling where God called them and said, This is what you're gonna do. Like Noah and Moses and then James and John and Barmanus and Saul, who's later was Paul. Now these men were called of God, which there were many more. But right here in this verse, it says, if you have this desire, it's a good desire to have. Now, with the desire, this is what goes with it. And all the things that I just read, those are things that you need to be able to have or not have to be a preacher. Now, I have a Bible teacher that I've been going to for over 25 years. Now, this man has the gift of teaching. He was called of God to teach. And he has the gift of teaching. I know without a doubt, my spirit definitely tells me this man has the gift of teaching. But then there's, there's also men who just teach. They're teachers and they're good teachers. I've been under some good teachers. But just like here, they desire to teach. And that's a good desire. I mean... Teaching the Word of God is, is not bad. I mean, that's, that's a good desire, the Lord said. And so teaching is a good thing. But like I said before, there's people who are called and then people who have the desire. My teacher, my Bible teacher that I've sitting under, like I said, he has a calling. He had the gift. Now, me, myself, uh, I don't know. I know I have a hunger to reach the lost people and I have a hunger to help baby Christians get on their feet to become mature Christians now whether that's just my desire or if it's my calling uh, I don't know I really don't concentrate on it I, this is what's in my heart and this is what I do now in Romans 8.28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who or the calling according to his purpose. So like I said. There is callings. For his purpose. But again I say right here. The very first verse. It says desire. Okay. Some people. They might say. Well you have to have a calling. Well no. Right here it says. If you desire to do this. But let me say this. Being a preacher. Make sure this is what you want to do. Or a teacher. And tell the truth. Because if you do, it's not a very popular position. If you're speaking the word of God, then you're going to offend people. That's what God's word does. Because we're, we're not perfect. I mean, he, he shows us how to live, what to do, what not to do. And sometimes we get offended by it. Well, no, many times we get offended by it. Because we're not perfect. So, it's not a very popular office to have. Because like I said before, uh, when you're preaching the word, the truth, the truth. Now there's preachers out there and there's teachers out there who they preach to the people, you know, what they want to hear. And that's, we have too much of that. But here it says that you, that you need to preach the truth of God. And to come with that, like in Luke 4.24... It says, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Now there are different kinds of prophets. They have prophets who, what they do is tell the future. And then you have prophets who are pastors. They're men in the ministries. And what they do is just, they preach the word of God. They tell you the truth. It says here, they're not even welcome in their own country. Meaning, they're not even welcome in their own home sometimes. Because of what they teach or preach. So make sure this desire that you have is a deep desire. If you don't like being rejected, uh, I'd pray some more on whether you should do this or not. In Luke 4, 
verses 28 and 30. When they heard this, the people in the synagogue were furious. Jumping up, they mobbed him and forced him to the edge of the hill on which the town was built. They intended to push him over the cliff, but he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. Now these verses are is speaking about Jesus. He went into a town and started preaching the word. These people wanted to kill him because of the truth. Just as Jesus we're talking about. We're not talking about just some man who might have been saying things that weren't true. This was Jesus. Jesus was preaching to these people and they got so offended they wanted to kill him. So as I'm making this tape to, to show others what qualifies us to preach, I'm also making this tape for those who, may, who might want to be preachers or teachers to understand what goes with it. Now, a preacher should also be blameless, meaning not spoken against. Now you have to watch, you know, you have to watch out because the devil will bring things against against us that are not true. So we have to watch how we walk. Because, you know, people judge out there and they think if you're a preacher, well, first, they do believe preachers are perfect. Some some well no a lot of people believe preachers are without sin like they're like perfect but they're not we're just men and we make mistakes but right here blameless means you know don't do things that the devil can use to make you look like a hypocrite now sometimes that happens anyway because the devil he is very wicked and he's very deceitful and he makes people think things that really aren't true it also says it, uh, the husband of one wife. And let me just point out right here, the husband of one wife. It didn't say the wife of one husband. There is religions out there who have women preachers. If you're reading these verses that I'm giving you, they're addressed to a man. And I also will challenge anyone to read their Bible. If they find anywhere in the Bible where the Lord had a woman as a pastor or a preacher or even have a woman over a man show me show me biblically in the Bible where this is at because everywhere in the Bible the Lord always had the man over the woman not because he loves the man more because in God's grace and love we're all equal but the Lord does have a chain of command and he's always had the man above the woman now here it says the husband of one wife so wives are not preachers. Wives are the their their wives of a husband who preaches. I can say more about that, but this is not what this is on. The husband of one wife. Now there's religions out there who believe preachers shouldn't have no wives. That's what they teach. But right here I'm giving you the scriptures. The husband of one wife. So it says you can have a wife. Uh, there's pre uh, religions out there that believe you can't be divorced and then become a preacher. If you remarry, you can't become a preacher. Uh, that let me let me just say this here: the husband of one wife. It could now it can mean that. I'm, I'm now this is some place. Uh, this is one place I'm going to get let you choose. It can mean that you can never be divorced and you can only have one one wife in your life. Or it can mean you just you can only have one wife, because as you know, there's religions out there, uh, one that's very popular, where you can have many wives. But here it says the husband of one wife, whether it be because you can only be married once, and you can't ever be divorced. You know, I'm gonna leave that up to you. All I know is it says the husband of one wife. It says you need to be vigilant, showing self-restraint. Able to control yourself. You don't lose your temper. Now these are things that a Christian man a Christian man should have, or any Christian man should have. But uh, right here, this is under qualify, you know, those who want to be a preacher. It says he should be sober. So he shouldn't be a drunk. Or he shouldn't do drugs. He should be sober at all times. He should be of good behavior. When he's out in the public, you know, even at home, not just in public. But he's not one that, you know, goes out and makes a scene or... You know, he should be a good behavior. He should 
act like a Christian at all times, especially out in public. He should be given to hospitality. I Meaning he's always ready to open his home. He's, he's, he's always ready to help. And it says uh, they need to be apt to teach. Capable of teaching the word of God. Now apt to teach, this is one that I want to really concentrate on. In 1 Thessalonians 2.4 For we speak as messengers from God. Trusted by him to tell the truth. We change his message not one bit to suit the taste of those who hear it. For we serve God alone who examines our hearts and deepest thoughts. So we're messengers from who? From God. If you're a man of God and you go strictly by the Bible, then you're from God. You're coming from God. Your, your message is, is from God. Because he's the one who sent us. We teach or preach what's in the word of God. And we're not preaching like it says here. We don't change it any at all. Just so we can make other people happy. We don't want to offend them. And this is what it's talking about. So our message is from the Lord. He gives us this message. To give. And we don't change it. We don't sweeten it. Or make it sound nice. If it's if it's something like I said before, if it steps on your toes, well, that's good, because we're learning. In First Corinthians nine fourteen, even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. So whatever I preach, I should be living it. Whatever I teach, I should be living it, and that's what this this verse is saying. In First Corinthians nine verses 18 and 19 what is my reward then verily that when I preach the gospel I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel for though I be free from all men yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more ok what well, I hear is what it's saying is which I don't do. I don't sell my tapes. I don't charge for the gospel. I, you know, my the gospel I have, it's a free gospel. Anybody who wants it can have it. I can either teach it to them or I can give them tapes t to learn it. And I don't abuse the power that the Lord has given me to do this. I don't change the words to make uh, me uh, seem like I'm bigger or greater than someone else hope you understand what I'm saying I don't abuse the power of the gospel like some men do and they do no I just take the word of God on whatever he tells me and I put it out there and I don't abuse that power and say hey you have to listen to me because I'm the one and only no in verse 19 it says I be free from all men well, what he's saying here is that men can't tell them what to preach, what to teach. You know, if you go to certain colleges, uh, Baptist College, Pentecostal College, whatever college it may be, or whatever religion, if you go to their college, when you get out, you have to preach what they teach you, their doctrine. Well, I'm not under no no college. I'm not under no certain doctrine. Uh, denomination, Baptist, Pentecost, whatever it may, you know, religions they got out there. I'm not under that. So I'm free from all men. Meaning I what the Lord gives me, that's what I put out. And whether this religion or that religion likes it or not, it's too bad. They can't do anything about it because I'm not under them. I'm under God. We need to trust in the Spirit to use our mouth. Not college education, men's wisdom, not seminars, because they, I've had a preacher tell me before, you know, they teach you when to get loud in your teachings or preachings. Well, you know, that, that's, that's not of the Spirit. That's man taught stuff. Well, I'm not under that. 1 Corinthians one seventeen. For Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And even my preaching sounds poor. 
for I do not fill my sermons with profound words and high-sounding ideals. For fear of deluding the mighty power there is in the simple message of the cross of Christ. So I'm not using my college education with big fancy words. Uh, like it says with profound words, high sounding ideals, like very educated stuff. You know, well, I'm just down to earth preacher or teacher. I don't use big words. I didn't go to college. I don't have those big words. I just use the words that the Lord gives me. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. By God's grace and mighty power, I have been given the privilege of serving Him by spreading the good news. Though I am least deserving of all God's people, He has graciously, graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. God's grace and mighty power. That's what gives me the ability to do this. He is... He has given me the privilege of spreading His good news. He has. God has. And it says I'm the least deserving. Meaning, you know, I'm not nobody. He didn't pick me because I was somebody. He picked me. I don't know why He picked me. But He did. And since He did, I listen and I obey. But I am the least deserving. So the least deserving can be a preacher or a teacher. You know, if you look at men... And say, how can he do it? I mean, he's blah, 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 whatever. No, right here the Lord says that I'm the least deserving. But I can use you. And he does. So don't think you have to be well educated to to preach or teach the gospel. Have college edu- education and stuff like that. Because right here it doesn't say that. We have John the Baptist who lived in the wilderness. And he was a poor man. He ate locusts. But he was a preacher. And many, many followed him. Many followed his preaching. And he sure wasn't educated. He lived in the wilderness and was a poor man. Paul, before he became a Christian, he killed Christians. He crucified Christians. Then he became a believer, a born-again believer, and the Lord started using him. So, do you think the church today would approve of these men to teach or preach their word, the, the Bible? I don't think so. But, the, but, the, but Jesus did. In fact, Jesus himself. Jesus was a carpenter. You know, if Jesus was here today, people wouldn't listen to him. You know why? Because... He didn't have a title, priest or pastor Jesus. Or he didn't have all these initials or letters behind his name, PhD or MD or whatever. He didn't have all this. So we wouldn't listen to him because he was just a carpenter. Well, I'm not Jesus, that for, that's for sure. But he's given me the ability to preach his word. And I just work for Frito-Lay. I'm not no high educated uh, person in a high company. I just work for Frito Lay. Jesus was just a carpenter. John the Baptist was a poor man. So, what we think qualifies people to be preachers, the Lord looks at it different. Galatians 1, verses 10 through 12. Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is based not based on mere human reasoning. I receive my message from no human source, and no one taught me. Instead, I receive it by direct revelations from Jesus Christ. Read these this, this verses that I just gave you. Look in your Bible and read them. God gives us our means. He gives us our source. Not human. Not colleges. Now, like I said, college, they teach you their, their doctrine. Well, the only doctrine I know is the Bible. 
And that's where I go to for my college degree is in the Bible. My teaching comes from the Word of God. And I give you many scriptures to read for yourself. Because you need to read them. You need to know the Word of God yourself. Not just let a a teacher uh, preach to you and you listen to them. But you need to read these verses yourself. So you can go to someone and say, well, the Bible says... You know, if you say, well, my teacher says, well, you know, that you're weakening it. It, That's not powerful when you say, my teacher says. But if you say, the Bible says, then you have a little more power from what you're saying. People will probably listen to you a little more if you say, the Bible says, instead of saying, well, so-and-so said. So the scriptures I give you, read them, learn them. So then you can give them out. Not as my teacher said, but what the Bible says. Second Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 3. Are we beginning to be like those false teachers of yours who must tell you all about themselves and bring long letters of recommendations with them? I think you hardly need someone's letter to tell you about us, do you? And we don't need a recommendation from you either. The only letter I need is you yourselves. By looking at the good changes in your hearts, everyone can see that we have done a good work among you. They can see that you are a letter from Christ written by us. It is not a letter written with pen and ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. Not one carved on stone, but in human hearts. Again, read these verses. Don't be like false teachers, which uh, I have a teaching that speaks about false teachers and and preachers. But And there's a lot out there. There's a lot of wolves out there. That's why you have to check whoever you're listening to. Check the scriptures that they've given you. Make sure they haven't taken them out of context. Check them. Don't just take it, oh, this is a preacher, so, you know, he knows what he's saying. No, you need to check. Whoever you listen to, you need to check them out. You need to check out the scriptures they've given you and make sure it's true to what they say. Paul's saying, I don't come to you with stuff written with pen or ink. So he's saying, I'm I'm not coming to you with, with some diploma showing, hey, look, I can preach. His preaching is by the Spirit of the living God, he said. And that's, and that's how I've learned to do my teachings. I read the Word of God. I have a teacher myself who I listen to and learn from. And I put these together and the Lord qualifies me to do this now. And I'm more than happy to do it. Because I love the Lord and I want people to know about Him. So I don't need to go to college. You know, when I was a younger Christian... I was all fired up for the Lord, and and people would say, oh, you need to become a preacher. And even my pastor uh, gave me some brochure on colleges to go to, Baptist colleges. And uh, he was wanting me to go. Well, I prayed about it. I didn't have this, this knowledge that I have right now on what qualifies you to be a preacher. But I, I knew to pray, though. So I prayed, and I asked the Lord. I said, Lord... Uh, is, is do you want me to go to college? You know, is this what you want me to do? And the Lord's answer to me was, "You're doing what I want you to do. You're going to church. You're learning there. You're going to a Bible study with a man that I've sent to you. So you're doing the things I want. You're in college. This is your college from me." So I told my pastor, I said, "No, it's not what the way the Lord wants me to go." Of course, he didn't accept it very well but I go by God I I pray and I listen to God so college and seminaries are not that's not what's going to train me to preach the word of God I go to the word you know John and Jesus was in their 30's they were in their 30's before they started preaching that's because they all they did before then was study and read and learn so to become a preacher these are things that you have to have and things that you don't that you shouldn't have like the next one is striker someone who likes to argue don't be someone who likes to do that 
don't argue just because there's people out there who just want to argue with everything you say. It says not to be greedy, greedy of filthy lucre, meaning you're not hungry for money. You know, there's a lot of preachers out there who are hungry for money, and you know they are because they're always begging for it. You know, a man of God, a man of God, will not beg for money. Because the Lord said to his disciples when he sent them out, he says, don't take anything with you. I will supply everything you need. That's what Jesus said. I will supply you with everything you need. You don't have to go out there and beg for anything. So you got preachers. I'm not going to say these preachers are not Christians. But I am going to say they're not in the will of God. Because when they're begging for money, then they're in something that's not of the will of God. A preacher should be patient. You know, not one to lose his temper or give up on people. That's one thing I've had to learn is patience. Because <clears throat> I've witnessed to people for a long time. And and I witnessed to them, I witnessed to them. And then after a little while, I just give up on them. Well, we shouldn't give up on them. You know, as long as they're they're breathing, they're alive, they have hope. So this is something we need to have is patience. He shouldn't be a brawler. He shouldn't like to fight. And in my younger years, I had plenty of that, but the Lord has changed me. So I'm not a brawler. I don't like to fight. He shouldn't be covetous, meaning he shouldn't want what belongs to other people. He should be happy with with what the Lord has given him. You know, a lot of people aren't happy with what they have. I mean, if they're walking with the Lord uh, and whatever he, the Lord gives you, you're happy. Like me, I, I can be happy. I've been happy and poor, and I've been happy and have, and have been blessed, very blessed. So either way, I've been happy because whatever the Lord gives me, that's what makes me happy. And I don't want, just because my neighbor has this or that, it doesn't mean that i got to have it also. It also says, one that ruleth his own house having his children in subjection with all gravity gravity meaning his wife is now you have to be a christian woman to be under your husband because most women nowadays that are walking in the world that are not born again they they don't want to be under a man they want to be equal to men a, a christian man a preacher his his family should understand what the words of God say. He should teach them and they should understand and accept them. And a, a Christian woman, she won't have a problem being under her husband because that's what the Lord has said. And his children should obey him. And his children are to obey him not only because he's the father, but because they're being brought up as Christians and they should have that want. They should want to... Uh, do the things that the Lord is teaching them to do through their father, but this is the Lord. So if children don't obey their their father, well, they're not going to obey God either. The same thing with the wife. If a wife doesn't submit herself to her husband, then she's not going to submit herself to, to the Lord either. But um, a Christian man who wants to be a preacher should have his house under order. Because if a man doesn't know how to rule his own house, how is he going to rule... Uh, the people of God if he has a church now I'm just a teacher I'm not a preacher well, I mean I can't pre preach but I'm not a pastor it also says uh, not a novice lest being, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil so what he's saying here a, a Christian shouldn't be a, I mean a preacher shouldn't be a, a young Christian and there's things I see on TV, little boys preaching. Well, the Lord said, no, a preacher shouldn't be a young a young person. And it's true what it says here because I did exactly the same thing when I, when I was going to that uh, church where they wanted me to go to college to be a preacher. And I didn't do it, but the preacher would let me preach in his church. And I started getting puffed up with pride thinking I was somebody because here I am preaching in the church and, and people were looking up to me and respecting my knowledge on the Bible and instead of having my eyes on the Lord I had my eyes on knowledge because I wanted to impress people 
And these are things that, that can happen when you're a young Christian and you become a preacher. So that's why the Lord says uh, I, it's not good for a young Christian to be a preacher. And just like I said a while ago, John and, and Jesus were in their 30s before they even started preaching. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. People who know him outside of church can speak good about him. That's what it's saying. Not just uh, his family or even just his close friends, but people who don't even, they just see him from afar. They should see that there's something different in him. And we also, we shouldn't put ourselves where the devil can make lies about us. And that's why ministers shouldn't preach to women alone. Like I should not go to a woman alone, just me and her, and preach to her. Because the devil can take that and he can sure turn it around. And then we've, then our witness is is going to be weakened. Even though if the man is preaching to her. But the devil can turn it around. And make people think, hmm, you know what I'm talking about. So it says not to do that. To be careful. Now in Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. It says, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here, heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto my servant. But I am slow of speech, and a slow of tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? So Moses is saying right here, I'm not eloquent. He's saying, I'm not a good speaker. Neither heretofore. Meaning, I never have been. Now, believe me, I can totally understand Moses here. Because if you're listening to this tape, I'm for sure not an eloquent speaker. The Lord used Moses in a mighty way. He was a slow speaker. He wasn't eloquent in his speaking either. Like I said before, just because a person is out there and has fancy speeches and eloquent speaking, that doesn't mean he's a man of God. Because Moses here didn't have none of that. And he was definitely a man of God. So remember that. 1 Corinthians 2 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstrations of the Spirit and of power. We don't need to be taught how to speak or when to get loud in preaching. The Lord gives us this ability. He, we don't need to use fancy words. Or enticing words. We use what the Holy Spirit gives us to use. So I say again. Use your spiritual eyes. To look for a godly man. A preacher or a teacher. Don't use your earthly eyes. Because then you're going to be looking for. Titles before the name. Initials after the name. Or eloquent speakers. Or stuff like that. This is all er looking through your fleshly eyes. Use your spiritual eyes, your spiritual ears to see if this is a man of God. Don't look to see how many degrees he has in college or how enticing his words are. Hmm. Maybe for religious people, maybe that's okay. But for a Christian, a true believer, no. They want someone who's going to be preaching and teaching in the Spirit. That's what, that's what we need and that's what Christians should look for. When, you know, preachers, like I said before, we're not perfect. We're not perfect at all just because we preach the Word of God. So don't look at us as being perfect and we shouldn't have any sin because we're sinners just like you. And the Lord said, I can still use you. Don't stand or believe in something because it's popular either. You know, there's there's big churches out there Real big churches. But a lot of people go to them because it's a popular church. Don't go to a church just because it's big and popular. If the church that you go to is small, but the but the preacher is a man of God, then that's where you go. This big church, I mean, if the church is that big, uh, it's a good chance the man is preaching to the people. He's, he's just preaching what they want to hear. So be careful on that. Don't go to church just because there's a lot of people who go to that church. Go to where the, the truth 
is being preached. You know, Jesus, he had a big following when he was here on earth. I mean, he fed 100,000 to 200,000 people. And he healed a lot of people. And a lot of people were following him. But you know, that sounds like churches today because they're healing. You know, they're thinking, oh, this is great, you know. No. Because when Jesus went to be crucified, where was all these people? Where were they? They followed him back then because he was giving. He was giving. He was feeding them. He was healing them. And that's what they were wanting. But then when it came time to stand up for him because he was the Messiah, he was the Christ, where was all these people? Those probably the same people that were eating his food and being healed by him were probably the same people that were saying crucify him. So, godly men who preach the truth are not going to be popular. They're not going to have a big following. They're not going to have a big following because the Bible says broad is the way that goes to hell and narrow is the way that goes to heaven. And that's just meaning that there's a lot of people going to hell and very few making it to heaven. So you're not going to have a big following. This is the word of God. So if you want to be popular, then don't become a preacher. Don't become a preacher. Because when you're telling the truth, like I said before, it hurts people, it offends them, and they turn away from it. In fact, like I read at the very beginning, they wanted to kill Jesus because he told the truth. You have a choice to make. Either you want to feel religious and go to church on Sundays and look good and live by the traditions of the church, or you can be a Christian and live by the Word of God. But this is all done by preachers and teachers. We help you to get on your feet. We help you to get born again. And then we help you get from babies to mature Christians. And that's what I do. So we all need preachers and teachers. So I'm showing right here what qualifies me to do what I'm doing. You got the scriptures that I've given you. So what else can I say? It's your choice. If you want someone with a robe on, you want someone with degrees and from college, then go ahead. I pray, whoever it is, I pray that they're a man of God, but just like I've read here, they're probably not. Most men of God are just plain old people who have simple jobs, and they just love the Lord and walk with the Lord. Open our spiritual eyes that we can see a true tre preacher and a wolf, that we can tell the difference. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this time. Thank you for opening our eyes to the words that you've given us, Lord, that you want us to know. Thank you, Father. Just guide us in the way you want us to go and help our feet to follow the footsteps that you have set before us. We love you, Father. And what we want is your will to be done in our lives. Thank you, Lord. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.